I shall introduce you on it. Yellow light. Yellow light. The, oh, the sorry. Yes. Sorry, yeah. Uh, oh my gosh. Wait. Yeah. Hey, uh, oh, fuck, 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 fuck. Sorry. Night, 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 night. Ah. Uh, night mode. Where? Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. Uh. I had okay. Ah, uh, sorry about it. <laughs> Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. Can you see it? Oh my gosh. Right. Okay. Uh, okay, first of all, thank you, um, Junior Dev, and also Engineer SG to helping to record and actually innovate in having this menu. So, my name is Max. Uh, who have not seen me before? <laughs> okay, okay, thank you for your first time. Okay, so today I'll be talking about um, developer blogs on using Jamstack. Uh, as you all, some of you all have not know what is Jamstack, I'll be talking about. Who actually has a blog by themselves? Raise of hand, anyone? No one? <laughs> I only know. Okay, okay. Yeah, so basically I'll be talking about uh, building a de developer blog, the advantage of having a developer blog for, for you, and also to do other stuff as well. Yeah. So basically for me, my name is Max. Uh, I represent Microsec with the uh, IoT security startup. So uh, we create security software for very small devices, even small as this. So yeah, and uh, I'm also involved in most of the tech meetups or some of the startup community as well when I was in university. So yeah, so Pax, yeah, Michael. <laughs> He's the one who actually involved and reviewed various other stuff. So I also have a weekly newsletter. If you're interested in web development, Python, and startup side, you can actually sign up over here as well. Yeah. So uh, as I said, I represent Microsec. Um, we actually are a very deep tech startup from Ashinovate, one of the portfolio companies from Ashinovate. And we actually work in a few environments like um, Smart Nation initiatives. We are involved in a few Smart Nation initiatives as well smart manufacturing and various other stuff. So these are all the jobs that we actually have. So I'm actually a full stack developer. We have data science and if you're interested, you can just talk to me or you can just drop me your resume through my email over here. Yeah. So as I said, no one has the blog. So yeah, I'll just skip this. Okay, so <laughs> all right. So these are all the advantages of actually having a blog. First thing is actually you actually document your learning journey in whatever you learn. So one way to actually to show yourself that you actually learn something is actually through blogging because you actually potential potential people may just look at you and you see, oh, do you have a portfolio? If you don't have a portfolio, do you write a blog? People will look at you and actually will know what you're actually your thinking process, the technology that you use. Sometimes like for me doing my work, I there's a lot of things I cannot talk about in my work. But actually having a blog actually allows you to actually write the stuff that you learn during like work for work. Like for me, I actually learned something that's called open API uh, that actually builds API for people. Yeah. And also the second thing is actually building your brand as a developer. So everyone here is a developer. But how do you differentiate yourself from other developers? So you may be a full stack. So how do you differentiate? Do you differentiate yourself in terms of technology or differentiate yourself in terms of you know technology and you know business development? How do you differentiate it? That is where having a blog actually helps you because you actually type your you you actually have your own narrative about what you do and how you can you are different from a regular developer. Third one is actually ripple effects. Uh, I actually helped a lot of uh, wrote a few articles and a lot of articles be useful for junior developers stack developers and various other developers and I reach about 3,000 viewerships based on my articles as well so it's actually very good in terms of ripple effect and people will share it as well yeah lastly it's mostly monetary purpose probably because you want to earn a bit of money you might not you actually do consulting services and stuff in the technology or specialization that you want to do it's very easy to monetize it based on your blog okay so how do I start? I don't want to start a blog after I talk about it. No one? <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, okay, yeah. So don't worry, yeah. So 
this is basically how you start. First of all, choose a topic. You can actually be very specific. Some people, uh, like example, uh, open a uh, API evangelists, mostly talk about API. There's also a person called Pi Danny. He's actually very well known for um, doing Django development work. So he actually wrote a book called Two School of Django, which I learned while I was actually learning Django as well. Second one, domain name. You actually can buy a domain name, it's very cheap. So it can be your own name, or you can think of a brand for yourself. Can be anything. Mine is actually very easy, Max Ong Zong Bao. <laughs> yeah, because if you buy, you buy your own name, right, then from there, nobody will actually buy, buy your name when you become famous or whatever. Okay, so, yeah. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, so basically, ideally, it's actually you actually build your own personal branding of yourself. I know this is a bit icky, but building your, your own personal brand and actually showing people uh, that you know certain stuff is actually can be useful as well. And it actually sometimes will actually attract people to be part of your organization or your company that you actually are involved in. So having it is actually very important. Uh, third one will be writing your blog page. You can think of it like you're writing your own resume. And this is actually one of the first few uh, pages that you go into when you actually go to a blog. Because I want to know about you or some potential recruiters or potential prospective employers who are interested in what you do may you actually want to talk, want to take a look at what you do. Yeah. Lastly, it's content. Uh, content planning can be quite, uh, quite bad <laughs> for me because I sometimes need to think a while for me, but mostly you try to strive by writing a weekly article at the start because I'm sure everyone don't like to write. <laughs> I also don't like to write. In fact, I take a long time for me. It takes about three to four hours for me just to write. So most of the time, I just think of oh, what topic must I write. Uh, then it can be whatever. As long as depending on the specific technology you like, you want to talk about it, just write. No, there's, you don't need to worry of whether what I write is actually useful or not. You can think of it like just purely just to document what you want and what you learn. And people might be interested in what you know. And you never know. Some people might use your technology because of things that you do, or the things that you and employers might see. Oh, you work with this technology. Maybe I'll just employ you. That kind of thing. It's a very useful way of differentiating yourself from a lot of people. As everyone over here, I'm the only guy who wrote abroad. Yeah. So you can think of it this way. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So basically, uh, articles can set uh, aside about three to four hours, especially if you're actually writing technical blogs. Like example, how to create a website using front end like um, React or back end with using some Django or Flask. You can think of these, those kind of various topics that you actually have certain understanding and you actually want to showcase to the world on what you want to do. And sometimes people like your article because the way you say it and also the way you talk about it. Yeah. So this is actually what we're talking about. Jamstack. So Jamstack is actually quite uh, interesting, and it's actually just recent years that actually become more and more popular. Have anyone heard of Free Code Camp? Everyone. Okay, not a lot. <laughs> okay, Free Code Camp basically offers uh, coding boot camps for free, and you can actually use the online portal to actually learn to do development work. And Free Code Camp actually use Jamstack as well because they actually want to reduce on the cost to do um, hosting services and various, others, various other stuff that actually deals with uh, hosting a website. So, and also they want it to be offline. Plus, they actually want it to be offline in terms of, and in very rural countries. Some countries that may, may not have very good internet connectivities, they want people to learn despite it's, uh, you need internet, but you don't need that much of internet. Yeah, so Jamstack, as you see, JavaScript, most front ends like React, Angular, or, gets, or various other front end view as well. APIs, mostly uh, various APIs you can think of. You can use a lot of APIs to do interactivity like content, uh, command box, and various other stuff. The last one is markup. Uh, I'm sure some of you all might be playing around with uh, Wikipedia's, those kind of things. So actually, you actually as a developer, you will be involved in writing documentations. And one of the useful and most important thing you need to know besides Git is actually to learn how to document in Markup or Markdown. Sorry, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So, 
So this is actually the three core of what you do for Jamstack. And it's actually um, technology agnostic, meaning you can use different type of technology to actually achieve what you want to do. Like example, Engineer SG's website, they actually use a variable in camera, right? Next version, next version. Yeah, okay, next version. Yeah, so this is actually my developer workflow of uh, how I create my blog. So you, if you want to know, you can actually take a picture and look at the articles and yeah, can see, yeah, okay? Yeah, so basically, uh, the cover image one for Unsplash, so whatever you write, first thing is your, your title, second is your cover image. People like articles with very beautiful image as well, so it's a bit clickbaity, but it's actually the truth. <laughs> yeah, so sometimes people like what you write based on your title. Yeah, so yeah, so this is actually what I did. So all of this from the right side is mostly on the Jamstack side. Uh, Contentful is more on the CMS, you can think of like WordPress, and also for GraphQL is a new technology. Gatsby is a React, React framework, one of the React framework. Nilify is basically why you do your hosting services for. So especially Nilify, they offer a lot of very good uh, free tier level, meaning they give you free HTTPS, free D, uh, CDN or content delivery network, that one you need to pay, uh, and free hosting services for free. So your only cost of starting is just probably your time, and your money just on terms of buying your domain, no, uh, uh, domain name, and that's it. Like, if you want to start a website, you need to go through, oh, I want WordPress or whatever. You still need to pay for hosting service, need to pay for WordPress and various other stuff. But through actually using Jamstack, you actually can reduce your cost drastically. And it's actually very fast, especially for Jamstacks. I can show it to you. Uh, one moment. Where's my... Oh. Okay, where's... Okay, can you see it? Right. So, uh, this is basically uh, Google's version of Progressive Web Web. So they actually, they actually audit your website in terms of how good it is. Can everyone see it? Uh, yeah, so it actually audits in terms of performance, SEO and various other stuff. If you say you want to be the leading edge or bleeding edge technologies, Jamstack is actually one of it, and actually, SEO is actually most important, especially for your website. So this is through your Google, and it actually gives a very fast, uh, fast in terms of loading speed as well. So for example, I just load, that's it. That's my web. Within a few seconds, and that's it. Yeah. So this, if you're interested in progressive web apps. Uh, interested in doing SEO and interested to make your life very easy just to focus on doing content can consider Jam, uh, Jamstack. And, okay. Now resume. Okay. Yeah. So still interested? Not interested. Okay. That's why. <laughs> oh my gosh. Tough crowd. Tough crowd. All right. Uh, so uh, just now you see Gatsby is basically a static site generator. It's very simple. It's actually HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So everything they converted to these three things. And your code and whatever is converted to these three, and that's why it actually is fast, and it's also quite useful as well. So you don't need to worry in terms of the maintenance, for example, your WordPress. How long do you need to upgrade, constantly to upgrade the plugins and various other stuff. You actually just deploy and that's it, you're done. You don't need to focus on upgrading your version and whatever. So that's why it actually is useful. Second, it's actually secure by default. The HTML, the JavaScript, they can't hack HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. Probably can, but not a lot. People, hackers might focus more towards WordPress because it's easier to attack something that is people that is popular. And yeah. Third one, as I said, the load speed is actually fast. You can see just a few seconds, and that's it. So it's very useful as well. Yeah, so these are all the various static site generators that you've seen. Uh, I'm using Gatsby. Uh, if you want, if you have some background in front end framework like React, this is actually one of it. And there's Hugo, Next, and Jekyll, and also Vue, which is uh, one of the popular ones as well, if you are into Vue. Okay, uh, hosting services is quite common. For myself, I actually use Nilify because they are very generous in terms of the versions. Because firstly, you can actually have about 100 form submission, so you can use it as your contact form. Second, you also can the hosting services is free, unless you 
uh, unless you need more things, then probably you need to pay for it. But other than that, you're free. And you actually have, you can actually host two sites with your just a free tier account. So one for your personal blog, one probably for your own personal branding stuff or doing consulting services kind of thing. So yeah, these are all the hosting services. Okay, these are my conclusion. So after writing multiple blogs, the first thing that you need to know is, right, you need to focus on your voice. Focus on just documenting what you Sure, you might be saying, oh, uh, this might not be useful for a lot of people, but sometimes actually show it, and actually send it or write it, people who are interested in what you write and they might like you and what you do. So yeah. Second one is actually, if you're not very good in writing, I would suggest writing, uh, reading this book. It's actually very useful besides using Grammarly, which helps you in terms of your grammar and writing. Third one, be consistent in, write, uh, in posting. So try to focus on publishing an article once a week. Then from there, you can try to scale up to like three or four up to you. But ideally, it's once a week. If not, it's, yeah, but yeah. Lastly, the most important part, whatever you write, share it to, on social media platforms and also share it on dev community. I'm actually, most of my viewership is actually come from dev community. It's a, it's a, it's a basically a software, software developer community in, in the US. So this is actually, there's a lot of very nice articles like free code cam and various articles. If you like those kind of things, that community is one of it, and also it's very easy for you to start. If you don't want to have your own domain, you don't want to set out your own gem stack, whatever, you can go for dev community and actually start writing. And it's mostly in Markdown language, and that's all. Yeah. So, any other questions? What do you mean the performance thing again? Performance thing, okay. Sorry, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, where's my. Yeah. Yeah, so it's actually under performance audit. So just write it inside Tango console. Yeah, where's the. Uh, can't see, too small. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, performance, performance. Yeah, yeah, so basically it's just. Yeah, yeah so usually you. No, you need to, you no, you need to actually. There's a, actually a, a button for you to actually click on and it's audit. I can show it to you. Uh, okay. Why? Okay, forget it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. So basically, it's here. Uh, audit. Yes. So basically, this is actually the Google version. So when you run it. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so bad. Yeah. yeah. So it's actually. Yeah. So uh, yeah, the performance audit lah. So. I have a few articles, so if you're interested in all those things, you can actually look at it. Yeah. Yeah, so this is where you actually show it. And then, especially for Google and various other search engines, they will actually based on your performance as well. So this is actually very useful to gauge your performance of your website. Yeah, for your design and whatever. Any other questions? Have you made money for the causes or the thing? Because you have one point I'm actually in the midst of writing an article uh, Python, Python newsletter or Python blog. Yeah. Not yet. <laughs> soon, 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 soon. <laughs> writing an article. Uh, there's a whole bunch of it. Yeah. Yeah. So I should take it offline. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah.